Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about homeschooling in the state of Indiana. And we're going to cover a variety of things and we're going to start with how to comply with Indiana's homeschool law at HSLDA. And they have memberships. If you have legal questions or legal problems, you might want to join so that they can help you with things like that. I am not an attorney, so... <laughs> I can't help you with anything that has to do with the legal, but I can review what's there and you can always check to see if they have updated information. And we're going to cover a variety of topics and this is one. So, and if you're creating a binder or a portfolio, you might want to print out the laws at the time that you start homeschooling so that you have it in your portfolio and if the laws change then you can print them out again and put the date that you printed them out. Um, first it says that you must provide equivalent instruction in English. So private schools must teach in the English language and provide instruction equivalent to that given in public schools. It says however the State Board of Education is not given the authority to divide to define equivalent instruction nor to prove homeschool programs. There are no mandatory subjects for a homeschool program, but HSLDA recommends that you follow the same general subjects that would be taught in public schools. You have to teach for the required number of days, which is generally 180 days, it says. So it says you must operate your homeschool program for the same number of days that the public school in your district are in session. You have to keep attendance records. Now that's another thing. If you're going to teach for a certain number of days, you're probably going to want to print out a calendar, make a tentative schedule of the days that you think you're going to have school and what you think you're going to have field trips on and the days you think you're going to have holidays. Because even if you're in a public school, sometimes it snows and you don't go to school that day. So you need a tentative schedule. And then as you actually have a schedule, you might want a separate calendar to write the days that you actually had school. It says you're going to want to keep attendance records to verify the enrollment and attendance of your students. Such records must be made available by request of the state superintendent or the superintendent of the school district in which you reside. And I would also consider a daily log. You can do it in a notebook and then you can type it into a word pad and email it to yourself in case your computer crashes. And you can print it out every now and then and put it in your portfolio as you update it. And you can put like day one and the date and that way you can count the days as you're going along. And then you can put what they did. You can put the time they started school. Then you can put the subject they're working on and the activity that they did in that subject. Then the time they go to the next subject, you can put that. And then you put the name of the subject and the activity. So if they're watching a Paul Bunyan video for history, you can put that down. And then you're having discussion. Or if they're play in a calorie counting game in health at a website. You can put the name of the website and that they're doing that and things like that. That way you have the record. So if they ask to see it, there it is. It says provide information to the state if required upon a specific and individual request by the state superintendent of public instruction. You must furnish the number of children by grade level that you are teaching at home Although Indiana Public Schools officials frequently request that homeschoolers complete an online enrollment form on the Indiana Department of Education website, this enrollment is not required under state law and is voluntary. There are a few situations when completing this enrollment form might be beneficial. And that is what they say at this time. And you can, like I said, you can get a membership so that if you need help with legal questions, they would be the ones that would be there to help you. Uh, this is IN.gov, which is the Indiana, uh, I believe it's the Department of Board of Education. And it, it has homeschool information. So you can go to their website and get information as well. And I'm not going to read all of this to you, but I will scroll down to show you some different things. And you can go on different links. And when you go to their website, you're probably going to want to print it out their legal information and put a date on it and put it in your binder or portfolio which 
You know, you could put a lot of fun records in that and look back on it and say, oh, what a great year, and oh, you've done so much, and I'm so glad I kept this. You know, you might want one for your student and one for you and have them help you create one and make it like a school project. That way they're taking part of it and they can look back on it and they can feel pride in the work that they've done. And it's just a great thing to do. Um, here's a PDF document from the Department of Education with their frequently asked questions. And I'm not going to read all this, but I will scroll down in case you want to read it without having to go to their website. And it says that homeschools are referred to as a non-public, non-accredited schools. And then it has the list of legal requirements. So you can print this out and put the date that you printed it out so that you have it in your binder. It talks about attendance records and maintaining records. So if you want to pause the video to read it, then you can. Because I don't, it's a lot of reading and I've got a lot of tabs open and a lot of different things that I want to go over. So like I said, you can pause it and read it or you can go to their website and download it and print it off. You can download it and save it as a PDF and email it to yourself after you've saved it so that it's not just the link, it's the actual PDF they had. Okay, now you can go online and you can find free calendars. Um, I believe the Department of Education on the Tennessee's website has an excellent calendar that you can print out and use. And you can put your tentative calendar, what you plan on having for the school days, and you can mark it with X's on the days you plan on having school, or you can use highlight markers, and you can put like an FT for field trip and an H for holiday. And then when you actually have school, you can use another calendar and put the days that you actually have school. So it's in a simple calendar to see the days that you had school as well. I would also keep the daily log as well. And a page that you have for the schedule that you've brainstorm the schedule and you try to come up with ideas for the schedule and then the, the schedule that you actually ended up using. I would have that in my binder. Okay, this is mathmammoth.com. If you're homeschooling, you're going to want to take an assessment test for your students, even if they homeschooled the year before. Sometimes they absorb different things and some things they need to review. Even in public schools, they begin the year often with review. So you can go and take these placement tests, print them out for your students to take, and you can put them in your portfolio. This will help you to be able to plan what you want to teach your student for the year. And it shows that you took the time to give them the test and that you created a plan. And if there's things that they need to review, you can highlight it. And that way, if they're on a different grade level in reading than math, you can see that at the beginning of the year. And then by the end of the year, if you want to give them the assessment test again, you can see how their progression was, especially if you're doing a portfolio that shows progression. People choose, some people choose to create a portfolio or a binder that highlights the best work. And some people choose to do one that shows progression. And some people choose to create a portfolio or a binder that shows a variety of skills. But this shows you how to test, how, how to grade the tests and everything. This is an excellent resource. Um, this is another excellent resource. And she gives them reading assessment tests you can print out and give to them to see where they're at on their reading levels. And I highly recommend that you do this at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year as well. You might want to take a, a standardized test, find out if you can take them with the other school students for free in that state. And if not, I might pay for it to have it because often in states, it seems that homeschoolers seem to score higher than public school students, and that way you have it. Uh, KhanAcademy.org is an excellent website. It says that it offers, at this time, free curriculum for everyone, everywhere. And you can see it starts with pre-K and it goes all the way up to college. And if you're utilizing this, you might want to 
click on third grade and fourth grade and print out the curriculum that they're using like a table of contents would be in a workbook so that you can see what they're learning that year if and put it in your binder your portfolio so if someone asks to see it you can show them this is what they are studying and this is what they're learning this year and I'll give you an example of that on a different website and this is all-in-one homeschool which is also called easy peasy and this is a great fun website for children uh, it is free at this time but they do try to get you to donate so you go to a website to donate and you can click cancel at that when you get to the PayPal donate site and if you use it and love it you can donate later and it utilizes different websites as it teaches them for their grade level and it goes by day by day and they also have Bible study but I think it's separate so if you're doing their daily activities you might want to add in the Bible study or have them do it separately because I don't believe it's included in the daily activities so and it's an excellent resource and it's great fun and children that I've known love it so and this is IXL and the one thing that I love about IXL it's not free I don't know why it's not showing me oh it's showing me the pricing uh-huh well the one thing that I love about it is that you can go on there's a page that you can go on on IXL here we go so I'll click third grade and you see all the skills that they're going to be learning and you can easily print this out to put it in their binder so it shows the curriculum and the skills they're going to be learning for the year and that way you have it in your binder like if you take a workbook you're going to want to print out the contents and put it in your binder this is what they're learning and you can check it off as they learn it and it this one does cost I think it's like 20 bucks a month but I'm not a member and I can mouse over and see the different skills they're going to be learning and I can test my student to see if they have these skills and if they know it and then review the things that they don't know and so I can easily use this like it's sort of an assessment test to see what they absorbed for their review but I love the way you can print it out and put it right into your binder and this website I'm just using it to show you because if you've never homeschooled before and you're trying to brainstorm and create organization you can see on the left hand side where it says books general homeschooling supplies you can see that how you can make a list of materials and books that you're going to need and as you do it you can actually list the books that you might use or the web pages that you might use and, and have a heading as the different subjects like science and English and math and that way you can brainstorm and this one says online subscription based programs <coughs> but you can put like curriculum and that way you can choose the favorite websites or highlight your favorite ones that you're going to use that year and then if you want to you can create another one like this to put in there one for brainstorming and one for the actual like if you choose one online complete curriculum like IXL and then you choose a workbook that you got at Walmart or somewhere that says it has a complete curriculum or on Amazon maybe you're doing the online subscription based program for three hours a day and then you're doing a workbook for an hour a day so that they have written work so that you can put it in choose which to put in their binder depending on their grades and then field trips you might want to do field trips to study civics and to study your area you also might want to have field trips for learning about different careers and visiting hospitals or libraries veterinarians hotels different factories places in your area and you can create a certificate of achievement or some kind of paperwork to have them fill out when you go to talk to the people that have the different careers and have your student create a list of questions like what kind of education do they need to get into that field and what is their daily type tasks how do they what are the things they do alone and what are the things they do as a team and how do they deal with situations and then you can put that in their portfolio or their binder and have some if they do volunteer work you can have somebody fill it out that works at the place to fill out so they have 
if they're going to college or joining the military, you might want these types of things in their binder or portfolio later to show that they did them. So these are some excellent ideas to help you out. Um, this is Gutenberg, Project Gutenberg. And if you're wanting to read with your students and you're not going to the library, but another thing is if you're going to the library, you might want to give them a certificate of achievement when they learn the library skills that you want them to learn and put that in there as well. But if they're not going to the library with COVID and everything, then you can go to Project Gutenberg and they have a lot of different books. You can see the next page where you click and you can click on the book that you want them to read and then you can click to read it and then there's the book. It's right there. It's so easy and you can click on these different ones if they're on different parts or you can just scroll down to read the book and you can zoom in or zoom out as you like. Another excellent reading uh, source on the internet is en.childrenslibrary.org which is called International Children's Digital Library and you can Google search it and they have thousands of books and some of them it might seem like they're there more than once but that's because they had different versions come out different years and then I think they have like four or five thousand books so then you can click on a book and you can click on that you want to read it and there's the book and you can click on the page and you can see in the upper right hand corner that you can turn the page to the right or the left as you're reading it and then you can scroll down and read the book along with your children so that's another excellent resource and it has all different ages so that you can choose the books that you want to use and if you see one and you don't like it you can pick another one because there's so many to choose from and it's another excellent resource. And as you read these books, I would have you, I would suggest that when you keep a daily log of what they're doing, write down the time and the date, day one, day two, day three, the date, the time, and the name of the book that they read. And make a little notes of assessments of how they did in their reading or their math here and there. And every uh, six to eight weeks, I would put a, a, a more detailed assessment of how they're doing in each subject. And at the end of the year, m write a more detailed assessment so you can and make sure that you put a positive spin on even if it's weaknesses like, oh, they were struggling with their reading, but they had such a positive attitude. And at the end of the year, you can put they went up this many reading levels during the year and they their positive attitude helped them to be able to accomplish their goal. So, and this is um, medium.com and she goes to different states and she posts if you if there's funding available. In Indiana, I believe that they said there is not funding available. If you're wanting to move to a state that has funding, Alaska has between $500 and $4,000 for each homeschool student and allotments if you use like an umbrella type school. And some of the schools, they want you to return the things that were purchased with allotment. Some of them let you keep the, and you can watch my YouTube video on homeschooling in Alaska, but one of them lets you keep it and then lets you donate it if you want to, to help other students. So in Indiana, there's no money at this time, but they do believe there's a tax credit and they think it's $1,000, so you can look it up and see if that's accurate or up-to-date information. Um, Schoolhouse Rock, I don't, some people have heard of Schoolhouse Rock and they didn't know, but it covers a variety of subjects and some people have never heard of it. It's got grammar, science, economics, history, mathematics, and civics. And they have YouTube playlists where people have the Schoolhouse Rock, so your child can watch these and sing along while they're learning. It gives you a break and children love it. I mean, it came out in the 70s, but children today still love it. And I don't know if they've seen it or not, but I know back in the day, we learned a lot. And I didn't realize how much we learned until I saw how much people weren't learning. But it shows you the subjects and you can see the multiplication tables. And it teaches you more than just the multiplication tables in the math. And you'll find that out if you listen to it as your student listens. Grammar Rock, they have a variety of subjects in English that you can see that they learn. 
And singing along helps them to learn it, I think, better than just reading it. They have um, American Rock, which teaches you another. See, so you, you can see the word subject and look under the word subject. And you can see it teaches you about voting, Electoral College, American Revolutionary War. And you can sing along and learn all these things. There's science. It teaches you science. And there's a variety of subjects in science you learn. It also teaches you about money and planning and budgeting. And you can see that here as well. It adds um, Earth Rock which teaches you about rainforests and oceans and gardens and wind power. So it's quite a lot that you learn in this short little music videos. And like I said, they're free playlists on YouTube that people have created that you can watch. I didn't, I did want to mention purple math because if you're homeschooling old children, fifth grade and up, all the way up to college, this helps teach them different skills. And you can click on the skills and go to the skill. And it will help. There's videos to help them to learn the skill. And there's instruction as well. So they can read the instruction or they can watch the video. And I think this is an excellent resource. And it's been around for years. It's been around since I went to college. Um, Extramath.org. And it used to be free. And now it's $2 a student. So it's very inexpensive, and if you're using like all-in-one homeschool, I think they utilize this. And it helps them to hone their skills and be able to do their multiplications faster and their simple math. It's just an excellent resource, so I thought I would throw that in there as well. And I had so many tabs open, so I couldn't open the last one. It's Indiana Homeschool Organizations and Support Groups. And I tried to click on one, but some of them have so many ads that it's hard to so they have a lot of them have years of experience from homeschooling like I homeschooled for eight years so if you join a homeschool group in a co-op you might find people that have years of experience with homeschooling that can help you they might have books that they're sharing they might have knowledge of information that you never even considered some of them are free and some of them cost money so you can go on there and try to find out which ones you're interested in joining and if you are interested in joining. And I think that joining homeschool groups or co-ops might be an excellent resource. And then if you have books that you want to donate to other homeschoolers, that would be a great place to do that. So, and if you're creating a portfolio, I just want to make sure that I had a list. You know, you want placement tests that you took. You might want to have a list of the placement tests where you found them, the placement tests that they took, and their scores and highlight them, a home, the state homeschool laws, copies of any forms that you filed with the school, proof that they were received, hopefully dated, a couple of calendars so that you have the actual homeschool dates and the ones that you had planned on brainstorming your favorite resources and then the actual list of resources you're going to use online curriculum workbooks field trips if you go on field trips maybe keep leaflets or flyers take videos or audio and have them write a paper about what they enjoyed or what they learned even something simple so that they'll reflect on the day to choose what to write Print out contents from websites like IXL or workbooks. Sample work, either showcasing their best work, progressive work, or a variety of skills for their binder portfolio. Uh, proof of the field trips taken, their weekly schedule. You're going to want to create a weekly schedule Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and put what, what you have scheduled for them if you're doing it that way. And maybe Wednesday you're going to want to teach them a variety of skills like 4-H type skills and cooking and things like that. Maybe Friday after noon you're going to be playing board games because board games are education and you can list them as part of your education or reading magazines that they've got that are educational in the mail. And, and so there's some ideas for you. Uh, daily log of activities you might want in there. If you go to the library on Saturday or the YMCA on Saturday, um, or if you're teaching them to do house skills like planning and budgeting and grocery shopping, meal planning, doing laundry, those are self-care skills and you can put that as well in your log of activities. Volunteer work with certificates and or records of outside classes taken like if you go to the museum and take art classes somewhere, 
you might want that as well. Contacts with emails for the school, homeschooling groups, and addresses for school and support groups. So hopefully I covered everything I wanted to cover. And I hope that helps somebody, if they're, especially if they're new to homeschooling. And I appreciate you tuning into my channel. Please feel free to leave comments and have a great day. Bye-bye.